Some of you may know, particularly those of you who read my blog, my day job is as a medical writer in the pharma industry. And when I was looking to break into this career path about four or five years ago, very kind medical writers and former medical writers took time out of their busy professional lives to help me learn more about their career and learn from their experiences. Without those kind folks, I would never have known about this career path. I wouldn't have known if it was right for me and I wouldn't have been able to build convincing applications. So suffice it to say, I am a massive advocate for information interviewing and networking and what that can do for your career. So how can you conduct information interviews well and what background information can help you make strong connections with medical writers? That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Today I'm thrilled to invite Vera Chan to the channel. Vera, as some of you may know, is the creator of the very popular YouTube channel, PhD Coffee Time, and she's actually a little bit of a YouTube hero of mine. But what you might not know about Vera is that she's also a medical writer. And we connected, not through our shared interest of YouTube, but actually when she was looking for her first medical writing job. Our first conversation was actually an informational interview about working as a medical writer. And I'd like to think that that interview may have played a small part in helping Vera prepare for her first job application. So to Today Vera and I are going to talk candidly about our experiences of what it's like working as a medical writer to help any aspiring writers out there prepare for their first medical writing job applications. So let's get started. For the record, for everyone watching this video, Vicky and I were complete strangers a few months back before I reached out and on this terrifying networking site called LinkedIn. Vicky and I met in this networking group in LinkedIn called the Grad Grid. It's an amazing resource and you can connect to people in your country, in your discipline, people who are in different industry and ask for a call like Vicky and I are doing. I like to do this video because I think it's important to capture what Vera has done right to inspire Vicky to pick up the phone and talk to me because I'm sure she's busy and she is full-time working as a medical writer. Her time is valuable. I'd like to know, Vicky, do you get contacted by a lot of people? I do get quite a few people um, who, who who do reach out to me about medical writing. I like to help people as much as I can, largely because I was in that exact position a few years ago. And if medical writers hadn't taken the, the time to talk to me on the phone and give me insights into the career that they did, I wouldn't have even known about medical writing as a career. And I certainly wouldn't have chosen it because I was com completely clueless about this whole area of medical communications back then. So I, I'm very keen to talk to people and help people as much as I can. Obviously there is a time constraint, but I like to pay back basically. When you're reaching out about informational interviews, it's not really about job searching per se, it's about researching and researching the industries that you're looking into. So I think coming at it from that angle is very important. I hope this video that we are making is going to maybe pay things forward for these people who have helped me and you. And I think that will save time for more um, PhD students who, if they are um, feeling interested in the road, they can already speak at the level of knowledge when they reach out to someone instead of having to go through that first phase of wanting to know what is the field is. And now I got the job, I also felt a little bit responsible to be uh, representing this industry and to share enough information to help people get started. You know, this is one of the experience I had is when I talk to people in the field, I not only learn information of the field, but I also get the sense of how people behave in that sector. And my general experience for medical writers is everyone's is super friendly and helpful. I, I should say that my experience experience as well of medical writing is exactly yours Vera you know I've been working in medical writing for just over four years now everybody I've met has been super nice and super helpful and friendly so as careers go it seems to attract very personable individuals into it and very helpful individuals as well so I think your experience of reaching out and talking to other medical writers shows that generally in general terms medical writers are a pretty nice bunch of people I absolutely agree with you Vicky okay so we we recorded something similar for Vera's channel which was looking 
looking at more the technical side of how to conduct a successful information interview. So if you want to learn more about that, I'll put the link in the description below so you can go over and click onto Vera's channel and watch that interview uh, where we discuss more about the technicalities of how to approach somebody and conduct an information interview. If you're interested in a career in medical writing, you need to prove to employers that you have the core skills to present clinical research data in a clear and concise way. The most common way that employers assess this is through a writing test, which is an integral part of the interview process for the majority of medical writing roles. So what are employers looking for from a medical writing test? And how do you know what to include to ensure that you make a good impression on prospective employers? This can be tricky to answer if you're not yet familiar with writing test best practice. So to help address this, I've prepared a checklist of key things that you'll need to consider when preparing a medical writing test. To get a copy of this checklist, just head over to my site for a free download. You'll also receive regular updates on support for your career transitions, working in pharma and scientific and medical writing careers. So I felt like I wanted to make my second career connecting my dots in the past. And I think medical writing was becoming obvious top of the list in that thought process. It's, it's an, a career that's of great interest at the minute, I think, because it's, it's a pandemic proof career. There's so much medical writing that's been going on this year. Lots and lots of work out there and it's a, still an expanding industry, the medical communications industry and pharma generally. It's something that if you break into after a few years of experience and you get to a senior level, you can pretty much within reason demand your, you know, your price because your skill set will be so much in demand once you've got those few years of experience behind you. And I really wanted an industry like that. And so when I heard about medical writing and I understood a little bit more about how the sector was going and growing, um, I decided with my skill set and, and fitting with the values that I enjoyed in terms of writing and communications and talking about science and writing about science, um, I figured it was it was definitely something I had to had to jump upon and try. As a female scientist, I think medical writing is really a compatible one for family. Being a medical writer lets you get your job done at the computer and that is empowering because you're using your brain most of the time as a worker and this is enabling a lot of equality. People don't care if you are what is your skin color and what is you know what was your gender as long as you deliver good quality work but I felt like in as a medical writer it gives me a lot of that liberating thoughts that I know I can do a good job I have much less second guessing of whether I fit in as as who I am as this gender and this at uh, this skin color and, and I observed that as um in the community of medical writers is quite diverse and there are many female medical writers who really enjoy this career and, and it works great for their family. That's quite an important point and, and one thing that struck me is coming from the world of academia which is very <laughs> <laughs> very well what do we say a little bit old-fashioned in those respects um right. which is a shame and we really shouldn't be having these conversations in the 21st century but we still are but moving out into industry and in particularly into the pharma industry itself i was struck by how many senior female managers there are a very high level and within medical writing it's a very female dominated career largely because of the things you suggested which is flexibility the ability to work towards your own schedule to some degree depending on whether you're an employee or a freelancer uh, and the ability to work from home it's a, it's a career where you could work from home and go in some days in the office or work completely 100% remotely long before the COVID pandemic. So it's been at the forefront of flexible working as an industry for a long time. So generally, I think people, not just women, but parents generally have very much, you know, uh, migrated towards that industry because it gives them a degree of flexibility. And that's not to say it's an extremely professional career path. There are some exceptionally talented people and very, very smart people working in medical writing. We just talk about the freedom that it could give for working flexible hours that I think most PhD people can relate to. That was the best thing in PhD and postdoc. They are responsible for their project deliverables. They kind of have that freedom to choose how to do things and they have this independence as well I think as being a medical writer and you get to decide how you spend the day um, if you're a freelancer you have even more freedom full-timer they they still have like you're, you're, you're using your brain and the computer and you have the your 
your own uh, autonomy. Now, the another side of being a medical writer is I think it gives you a more efficient way to see medical progress and scientific progress because you are not spending time doing the lab work, which takes most of the time for for a science uh, scientist training. And I think being just compartmentalized as a medical writer gives you a lot, like maybe 10 times more reading and writing experience to learn more about the new advances. And, and if you're those people who love innovation, who love new drug mechanism and new ways of treatment. And I think these are uh, connecting the dots and it excites me to know that I will be working in a much faster pace to see more and more advances. Instead of having it being in academia, you have one project and you probably have the same one project for four years or three years. And as a PI, you also have one PhD student as one project and it typically can th be three to four years. So I, I think the pace is faster and you get to see a lot more diversity on, of science, which makes me feel actually closer to science in that way, uh, instead of thinking that I'm distant to being a scientist. Yeah, you will see more translatable and directly relevant science for sure. When a groundbreaking clinical trial <laughs> finishes and important data is coming off, for example, take the COVID vaccine. Right. One of the few first people to see that data would have been the medical writers working on it. So, you know, you've got the clinical science teams who will be analysing and, and data mining the data. And, and checking it and then it will go to the communications experts who will be wrapping it up in a way to present it so you are one of the first in line to see hot off the press data very confidential data long before it's released you are really working at the forefront of, of right. medical science you can comment below and say thank you to vicky because she has done a tremendous job what she has said to me before and i think this is helpful to have it recorded and make it publicly available so I would just like to thank Vera so much for taking the time to come and talk to us about her experiences of transitioning from academia to medical writing and her experiences of life as a medical writer. Just summarise a few key take homes from our conversation. And the first is join GradGrid on LinkedIn. It's free to sign up. As Vera mentioned, there's thousands of postgraduates on there, both working in academia and in industry. And I have seen other medical writers on there, so it's well worth signing up and connecting with people there. We discussed a lot about informational interviews and we mentioned that they're mostly about research talking to people really does shorten a job search so it's well worth putting yourself out there and when you are networking don't get discouraged if people don't actually get back to you sometimes this is normal it happens people are busy just keep going and it will work out for you we also discussed what a career in medical writing can offer and the first of these is a degree of flexibility both in terms of the way in which you can work and in your career options as well medical writing also gives you exposure to a wider variety of clinical research Research. You may in your career work on lots of different therapeutic areas and you'll certainly be exposed to a, a wide variety of research projects. And finally, medical writers really do work at the forefront of medical science. So if that's something that excites you and interests you and you enjoy reading and writing and learning about science and communicating it, it could be a good career option for you. I hope this conversation with Vera helps any aspiring writers out there understand more about what it's like to work as a medical writer and provide a few tips for how to network with industry professionals. So good luck with that networking.